morning comes from an old upper room devotional. It seems there was a family on vacation in the Black Hills of South Dakota. They were driving down a winding road that was popular with tourists because of the wild burrows that often graze on the forested hillsides. They talked about seeing the burrows for days. And their five-year-old son was anxiously anticipating this experience. After driving for more than an hour uh, around the rural area marked on a tourist map, his mother told her son that they would have to give up the search. From the back seat of the car came this quiet prayer. Please, God. Help my daddy find blindness. The mother's heart sank. How could she tell her five-year-old that God does not always answer prayers in the way we expect? As she began a shaky explanation, they rounded a curve and saw a dozen burrows dotting the hillside. The white muzzled creatures began nibbling the dry grass on the shoulder of the road. Squeals of delight erupted from the back seat. Just as the mother was limiting God's power, her son's prayer was answered. Did she even stop to think that God might respond to this simple prayer? Certainly the parents were not expecting to see the birds. God's love is far greater than we can measure or understand. And he answers sometimes even the smallest prayers in unexpected ways. Who are we to be surprised when prayers are answered? Welcome to worship in the Lord Island United Methodist Church this morning, where we celebrate the magnitude of God's love in our world every day. Announcements. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. If you would like to share a picture of your mother with the congregation, please bring it to worship, and we'll put it up on the altar, and we'll have a special Mother's Day prayer. We're also planning on having the choir sing a familiar anthem. Even though I forgot the name of it already. Motherline Basket. Motherline Basket, thank you. Um, so if you want to sing with the choir, please come to worship a little bit early on Sunday morning because most of us know it already, and it would just take a few minutes to get more well, ready to go. The verse I want to bring to your attention this morning is from John chapter 15, verse 10. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Is not found in destruction. 
Today's New Testament reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Our epistle comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Christ is, Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Today's Gospel lesson comes from John 15, 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. those vows, 
and our family progresses, we might have children. And our instinct is to love our children intensely. We love them so that they might learn to love with that same intensity that we love our spouse. So that someday they too can love others. Okay, so we can love our job or a particular activity like fishing or gardening or singing. Those types of love are just things that make us happy when we're doing it. Real love should show itself not only by declarations of affection, but by the level of service we tender to the ones we profess to love. As an example, a young man felt the call to become a missionary, and he believed he believed he'd been privileged to study God's word and that it was now his responsibility to take those words to other people. It was only after becoming engaged in the mission field that the missionary became aware that God was at work with others well before he or any other missionary actually showed up. God's divine love is called agape love. It is unconditional. God's love and presence are a, the message for all creation. And we find proof of God's love in each of our scripture lessons this morning. In the story of Peter and Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48, we're taught just the opposite of what the young missionary's belief was. Cornelius is a Gentile, and yet God gives him the vision to seek out Peter. And as Peter speaks to Cornelius' family, the Holy Spirit comes upon the family, and they profess faith, much to Peter's companions' amazement. Cornelius's inquiry is an example of John Wesley's doctrine of pervenient grace. Pervenient grace is God's loving anyone, even before they know him. Provenient grace is available to all people, everywhere. All we have to do is recognize that God's love is for each of us, and all of us, and always available. So God's love through the Holy Spirit fell on those who heard Peter's words. The believers who came with him and Cornelius, Cornelius' household. The believers who came with him couldn't understand that what led Cornelius' household, the Gentiles, to experience this love or presence. But still, their faith was such that Peter stopped everything and took the time to baptize the family. In our reading from John's Gospel, Jesus continues to teach his disciples about love, his love for his heavenly Father, his love for them, and his love for the rest of the world. And he is using his love in this prayer to show them how to love. Jesus says, abide in his love, which is further defined as remaining in his love and keeping his commandments. Believers abide with one another in love and in their mission in the world. 
They won't bear fruit while abiding in Jesus' love. This will be a natural extension of their connection with him. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you, he says in verse 12. So Jesus has commanded us to love. To love as he did, sacrificially, like he did. This is not a one-time commandment just for the disciples. It's for all of us, mothers and fathers, parents and children. It is an ongoing, new every morning type of command. Love. Love one another. This is not the love your enemies command. It is another love, another love one another command. Love those around you, those close to you, those who need you, those in your care. This is the sacrificial love command that Jesus calls each of us to follow. The kind of love that Jesus requires from his disciples will show the others the power of God's love, which exceeds any love that they can offer on their own. In 1 John chapter 5, the author writes, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know we are that we love the children of God. And when we love God, we we'll obey his commandments. Let me read that again. Everyone who believes that Christ, Jesus is the Christ, has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey, obey his commandments. So there is the connection, the connection to God as children of God through our connection and love of his son, Jesus Christ. Loving is who Christ was and defines who we are to become. Loving is a way that lays down our lives for those we love. As we've been actively loved by God, so we're called to love in words and action. This type of servant love honors God and the commandments of God. So love seems hard and requires a bit of effort on our part. But our love is often the response to love that we have received from others or from God. We respond to the love of our parents and from our spouses or from our siblings in Christ. But even when we've experienced none of these types of love, We've still been loved by God. Not because we deserve this love, but because God first loved us. We're called to definitive, sacrificial acts of love, which means that all the loving we're able to do is in response to God's love for us first. We've already been loved. All we need to do is respond like Jesus did. Love God and others. Even when it means giving up part of ourselves. That's the amazing thing about God's love. It's so big that he never has to give up anything. And when we love him, he'll supply us with the resources we need to love others. Amen. Would you join me then for our unison prayer as found printed in your bulletin? <coughs> oh God, 
you are a faith in the world. Think of that in fears, think of even that in our father. We're grateful for the immensity of your love, even when it sometimes scares us. When the immensity of your love frightens us, we return, return to you in hope. When we want to make you smaller, small enough that we can hold you, help us to see beyond our narrow vision. Remind us again, O oh God, that you will always find and hold us, for your heart is big enough to hold the whole world, including us. Teach us once more that you will always grow when we love others as we love you. Would you continue with me in the attitude of prayer? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ, who became a human, just like us, to show us how to live in this world as if we were living with you in your kingdom. As the apostles' lives were changed by Christ's story, so we ask for your love and the presence and the presence of your Holy Spirit to guide and to change our lives. We would ask for your special attention and care for those who have included in our prayer list this morning. Prayers of joy for birthdays for Doug and Bill Cohen. Prayers of joy for Patty's grandson Austin as he gets married and starts a new life. We would ask also that you would be with those families who are mourning the loss of family and friends of corporate workers. Comfort and strengthen all who are ill in dealing with life's daily struggles. Help them through whatever circumstances they face. And help us to feel the power of your love in our lives as we provide prayers of comfort for all those we meet as we wander through life this week. We pause now for a few moments of silent prayer this morning, bring our personal petitions directly to God's throne. Precious Lord, as we prepare to share communion this morning, remind each of us that you are present with us this morning and will continue to be with us through the days ahead. As we work to be your disciples in our modern world, all these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who loves us and the world. Amen. Our last hymn this morning is number 2130 in the faith we sing, the summons.